Now on this episode of China Uncensored, China just won the South China Sea. I mean, not the whole sea, just most of it. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. The days of uncertainty are over, and I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief over that. Tensions and tempers have been flaring in the South China Sea over competing territorial claims from China, Vietnam, the Philippines, Taiwan, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Cambodia, and Thailand. That's thing of the past. The territorial disputes are over, and China is the winner. How did they do that? You would think that China's claims of sovereignty over the South China Sea, based on this map, uh, something like that, a map that comes from a rubbing of a stone engraving made in the 12th century that depicts the borders of China as depicted in an ancient book written in the 5th century BC, would be proof enough for anyone. But relying on old maps of questionable authenticity brings dubious results. So obviously the solution is to make new maps, new updated maps. And how do you know these islands belong to you? Because you built them yesterday. China has been quite literally building their own islands on rocks and reefs in the disputed territorial waters. Since January, three to four have been built, ranging from 20 to 40 acres each. According to the New York Times, one seems to be built specifically as a military installation. It's the same strategy China seems to be favoring in the space race with construction of their very own small moons. Wait a minute. That's no moon. The crux of the matter is the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. It says that up to 200 nautical miles from a country's coastline is designated an exclusive economic zone. Within those 200 miles, you can explore and exploit the natural resources as much as you'd like. Although the exclusive economic zone is still in international waters, you basically get to call dibs on everything that's under the surface of the water. So you know what could be considered part of a country's coastline? Any islands they own. Did I mention the South China Sea has abundant fish and reserves of oil and natural gas? Now, our official islands aren't covered by the treaty, but since these islands are being built on previously existing rocks and reefs, it's kind of a gray area. There's one little catch, though. Also, according to the UN, the basic definition of an island is that it can support human life and economic activity. Damn that meddling UN! Who's in charge of that thing anyway? Oh, that's right. Increasingly China. But this is why China has been pumping millions of dollars into Yongxing Island, which is part of the Paracel Islands. It's not even a square mile big, but it already has everything from an airport to a hospital, banks, a supermarket, a post office, and a school. Now, this is just 26 nautical miles from disputed waters where China installed an oil rig that resulted in anti-Chinese riots in Vietnam. I wonder what the reaction will be when they find out China has been building on the Johnson South Reef, which China killed about 70 Vietnamese soldiers and sailors for in 1988. Oh, right. The Vietnamese Foreign Ministry demand that China immediately stop illegal activities of expansion and construction. Good luck with that. Well, now that the South China Sea dispute is won, maybe China can sort things out with Japan in the East China Sea. I mean, the Diaoyu Islands clearly belong to China. They were, after all, mentioned in a 600-year-old Chinese book of sailing directions. If that doesn't count as ownership, I don't know what does. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.